All right, we are talking blood sugar, uh, specifically with continuous glucose monitor tracking, or CGM for short. I'm wearing one right now. You may have seen me on social talking about these lately. They're one of my favorite tools for being able to see what's happening inside our own bodies in real time. That is so cool that we have stuff like that now. You know, it's kind of like the, as I mentioned the episode, heart rate variability devices help us see what our sleep cycles are like, what our recovery levels are like, all sorts of different data. I love this, right? Instead of just getting this one random snapshot, you're getting all that information on the daily, you can see what's happening while you're sleeping, blah, 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 blah. So um, I asked Catherine uh, Staffieri, uh, one of the nutritionists from Nutrisense, who I use for continuous glucose monitoring, to come on the show today. And we thought an area that would be helpful to talk about would be in terms of blood sugar and perimenopause. Um, if you're not a woman or you're not, you know, thinking about menopause, you're not close to menopause, it's still going to be an enlightening episode for you in terms of the interplay of blood sugar and hormone fluctuations and, you know, where do, do other parts of our health picture come into blood sugar, what to consider and all of that. So a little about Catherine, she holds a master's in nutrition education from Columbia University, completed her undergrad at University of Pennsylvania. She loves cooking, spending time with her three kids, traveling and being active. She is fantastic and she's straight to the point, lots of great info. She's counseled thousands of clients on their glucose scores, reviewing over 750,000 hours of glucose data and recorded meals in the process while recommending nutritional adjustments to improve metabolic health. So she's been doing this for a minute. <laughs> she has so many wonderful insights that she puts together so succinctly and easy to understand. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Here is Catherine Staffieri. Okay, so Catherine talking menopause, perimenopause, before menopause, during, after, postmenopause and blood sugar. I'm so grateful that you're coming to talk on this because I know this is an area like a lot of women are just like, what is going on? Like, I haven't changed anything. I don't understand. So, you know, I'll let you kind of start where you feel most appropriate. But what do women need to understand about approaching menopause, going through menopause, after menopause and their blood sugar? Yeah, thank you so much for having me on because I do feel like this is such a a great topic. And it's something that women really weren't talking about until pretty recently. I mean, right. I think it's been a real, um, wonderful, uh, shining a light on this. And so many apps are coming out and people are talking about it, and books are coming out and there are now, you know, menopause experts, which is like so great because right. I think a lot of women to your point felt like they really struggled for a while and they, they weren't really allowed to talk about it and they mm -hmm. didn't quite know who to talk to about it. Do you talk to your OBGYN about it? Do you talk to your primary care doctor? Like what's mm -hmm. going on? And then, um, so I think it's been really, really interesting that A, women are happy to talk about it and B, are really being proactive, right? Yeah. So they're not just sort of being like, man, this stinks. Right. <laughs> they're like, hey, what can I do to make this better? Um, and I think it's really powerful. So I'm so glad you're having uh, people on yeah. to talk about this topic. Yeah, thank you. Agreed. Thank you. So, you know, um, typically what, what do you see as somebody is approaching menopause, um, with their blood sugar? And as they go deeper into it, what are some, you know, typical situations that maybe we can normalize things for women and help them understand a little deeper what's going on? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, you might have been going through, you know, your listener might be, um, have had really regular cycles. Everything was like clockwork, super easy to predict. Everything's normal. And then bang, all of a sudden things are getting really weird. Um, your cycle is, is irregular, much heavier. Um, you might be having different, um, PMS symptoms than you had before. Uh, all of that. You're not sleeping as well. Maybe you're not having sort of the full hot flash night sweats, um, that kind of stuff, but just you're noticing that things are different. Right. And that's mm -hmm. obviously a change in your, uh, estrogen levels. And I think, you know, there's been, so many wonderful graphs that have come out that people can look at, right? But when you have your regular cycle, your hormones, your estrogen and progesterone are going in that regular cadence, right? One of them rises while the other one's lower, and then the other one rises while the other one drops down, right? And 
what we've realized uh, is that estrogen and insulin are very, very well linked because they're both hormones. So I think a lot of times I, I tend to sort of explain this at the higher level because sometimes people don't really understand like what is that connection between your sex mm -hmm. hormones and your your glucose? Like what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. So so when I when I talk about it, I really start with the basics. So insulin is a hormone, and so are the so are your estrogen and progesterone. So all of that is working in your endocrine system. And if something in your endocrine system is off, generally it's going to have a ripple effect into other parts of your endocrine system, right? And so what happens is again, I, I like to sort of explain high level if that's okay with you. What happens, um, you know, it, when you're taking in carbohydrate the body breaks it down into that smallest little building block of glucose. The glucose enters your bloodstream and the body senses it and goes, oh, wait, okay, great. We better produce some insulin, right? And then the insulin acts as a key. It unlocks the cell. It allows the glucose to enter and then the body uses it up, right? That's when everything is working perfectly and your body recognizes and produces the right amount of insulin. Everything gets ferried away, used up, bing, bang, boom. We're good to go, right? When we're going off the rails and things aren't working as well, we we can see insulin in, uh, insensitivity, right? Where we're just not recognizing that key isn't unlocking the cells and your glucose is floating around your bloodstream, floating around your bloodstream, right? And so what we see is estrogen really promotes that insulin sensitivity. All those hormones work well together. So when you don't have enough estrogen, that insulin sensitivity, that ability for your insulin to unlock your cells is hampered. And so we can see that in a continuous glucose monitor, which is really helpful for women. Because again, like this, you were saying, they're like, what's going on? This is so crazy. Well, we can show them what's going on inside your body, sort of this proxy system of looking at glucose and, 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 and what's happening when you're eating. Yeah. And you can actually try things out and see what happens as a result. It's kind of, you know, I always say like the, I'm wearing a, a NutriSense CGM right now. And it's so awesome. Cause like it, it's, it's this and like a, a HRV monitor, like a aura ring or something like that, are my two favorite tools to actually be able to see what's actually going on, try out different things and see what actually happens in your own body in real time versus I got my HbA1c and so that's what's the average of the last three months but I have no idea like what actually happened in there I have no idea like what it's like during sleep or how I'm responding to different types of meals and carbs I have no idea how my stress levels are really impacting it I just know that it's elevated or good you know like but there's no actual information for you to work with you know so that's one of the main reasons people constantly ask me if I'm type one diabetic and I always feel bad. I'm like, Oh no, sorry. Like <laughs> I'm not in the club. I oh, not in the club. Not in the I'm like, Oh, sorry. No, I'm just checking my blood sugar. Much love. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's very, very helpful to be able to see what's actually going on. Exactly. And, and particularly for women, when you are going through that perimenopause, phase, you're, you want this data on a continuous basis because you have unpredictable cycles perhaps. Right. right? And right. so I, you know, a lot of people ask me like, well, how long should I wear CGM for like two mm -hmm. weeks or whatever? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, you got to get a couple of cycles in there to mm -hmm. really see how your body is responding. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, obviously at the beginning of your cycle, your estrogen levels are higher. That will mean you are more sensitive to insulin. You are better able to handle those carbohydrates right. when you have low levels of estrogen. It's harder for your body to handle those carbohydrates. You might see higher blood glucose levels because remember we can't we can't unlock the cells as well at that point. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's it's super duper interesting also to see how glucose impacts your brain and estrogen in your brain. I mean, estrogen really helps ferry the glucose to your brain. Your brain pretty much only wants glucose. It, it will tolerate ketones, but it really just kind of wants to run on glucose. Um, and so when you have low levels of estrogen, it can make it even harder for that glucose to reach your brain, which I think is so interesting. A lot of times women are like, I've got this brain fog, like what is going on? I'm just not firing it in the same ways that I used to be. And a lot of times that can be because of the low levels of estrogen, your brain is not able to get as much of that energy that it needs. So super interesting. And when you have that CGM on, you can see how your body's responding, not just in that, how, how do I do with sushi? How do I do with oatmeal? 
Um, how do I do with a glass of wine? You can see overall that picture, um, mm -hmm. which is so helpful for women to make sense of what's going on inside their body. Yeah. I, you guys have like monthly or three months, six months a year. Like I would say, you know, if I, once I get to that point, which I'm not too far away from, I'm 41, you know, um, I'm going to want to see that at least three months, but probably more like six personally, just because I know it's going to be erratic and changing, you know? So I, I, I love that you guys have that, you know, and it obviously it's cheaper too, if you go longer. Right. right? So there's that, but it's, yeah, I think it's, you know, so many times women, uh, you know, I've counseled hundreds of women at this point, um, looking at their CGM data and there's so many aha moments, right? I mean, there's so many moments when they're like, oh my God, I had no idea. Right. I think particularly you touched on sleep and stress. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to see a spike from a higher carbohydrate meal. Um, it's pretty easy to see a spike from exercise, which I'm sure, you know, mm -hmm. you talk about and you've seen, um, with your workouts, but what's really fascinating to women is particularly when they are going through these changes and they're not sleeping as well. Mm -hmm. Um, or as I always talk about women in this phase of life in this like 45 to 55 phase of life, you are not only trying to like launch your children, but you might be caring for aging parents or like, you know, stressful times in your job, like, you know, career advancement, all that kind of stuff. You are juggling so much and the stress mm -hmm. of it can really impact your health mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And there it is just staring you in the face. It's like, this is what's going on. And I think anybody who's worn a CGM has had like, when you have like an acute super stressor, like something that really makes your nerves go up or like stress you up, you just see it like, I mean, it can skyrocket sometimes depending on how wound up you got. And just looking at that is like such an eye opening aha moment, you know, uh, it's like, whoa, what if that was happening all the time? Yeah. You know, and we talk, we talk a lot about it. You know, women will say, I'm so dialed in. I'm really, you know, we get, we get a lot of times when we're like, I'm not eating, you know, anything fun at night, you know, yeah, like right. I'm eating early, I'm going right to bed or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. And then they wake up and they're like, why is my fasting glucose so high? Like what's going right. on? And we talk about stress. I mean, we talk about like, what do you do first thing when you wake up? Do you check your phone? Are you like, are you looking at like emails or like stressed about your day going forward, right? When you have that sort of chronic stress, if you are just running, 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 you can see that in that higher baseline glucose value because you never really let your body reset and go back down. It's always kind of in that fight or flight um, mm -hmm. state. And that is detrimental to our health. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even just like for me, like I'm very proactive about like slow mornings and slow evenings, but the whole rest of the day, like it, it's definitely more elevated than when I'm just like sitting around, you know? So even though I'm not running around like insanely stressed, I'm just, you know, kind of going about my, my work day, picking my kids up. Like I don't feel hyper stressed, but it's definitely higher. It's definitely mm -hmm. higher that whole mm -hmm. window of time, you know? It's right. like nineties, sometimes, you know, maybe even hundred and randomly, if I got a little stressed out or too busy, too much going on, it's just such a cool thing to see that in real time play out. Um, I wanted to ask about, I want to talk about solutions or, you know, possible ideas. So let's say a woman listening to this, she's, you know, perimenopause cycles getting disrupted. Maybe she's got some, you know, brain fog or whatever. And, um, she's in that unpredictable, you know, things are just changing and going all over the place. Um, what, you know, possible solutions might a woman like that consider in terms of regulating her blood sugar when her hormones are not regulated? <laughs> and that's, that's exactly right. So we can't control necessarily the estrogen fluctuations. Mm -hmm. um, so what we can do is we can work on the other things that we can do to control our glucose, right? And along that, you're you're just helping your body in general, right? You're reducing inflammation, you're improving your energy levels, you're more likely to be, you know to want to work out, you're more likely to sleep better. Like all of those things are great so that mm -hmm whether your estrogen is high or low at any given period of time, the rest of everything is, is, is getting more under control, more managed, more optimized. 
So a lot of times, you know, people think we just talk to our members about, you know, carbohydrates and, and we just put everyone on like a keto diet or, you know, we don't let them eat any, any carbohydrates. And that's a hundred percent not true. Right. So we, t- we look at the whole picture, right. And we look at, say, say someone prefers intermittent fast. Absolutely fine. Let's figure out a way to optimize that, right. How are you breaking your fast? Are you breaking it with a big bowl of oatmeal and your glucose is spiking and then your energy is crashing afterwards? Like, you know, let's, let's find a way to optimize that. Let's mm-hmm. find a way, maybe every afternoon you feel so sluggish. You're in the car picking up your kids in the in the pickup line and you're like eating all the snacks and, and okay, well, let's talk through that. What did you have for lunch? Did you skip mm-hmm. lunch? Um, was lunch just a bag of, you know, goldfish or something like that? You know, <laughs> I'm just pulling at things, right? Or did, did you just have like a sugary latte or something because you were so tired? So we try and optimize on the granular level. Uh, like, let's look at your daily patterns. Let's look at your lifestyle. Let's see how we can optimize those meals. Then we also look at things like movement, right? I mean, what can we do? The best thing you can do is to get up and move around, move more, move more often. You don't have to move more intensely, I'll Mm -hmm. say. Like you don't need to start running all the time, but you Mm -hmm. gotta move. You gotta move your feet. Mm -hmm. You gotta get up and walk around. Mm -hmm. Um, Not only does that help with your digestion, it just helps boost your serotonin levels, get some vitamin D if you can get outside. Mm -hmm. Um, All of those things will dramatically help because like I said Mm -hmm. before, when you take in carbohydrate and it's floating around, if there's nowhere for it to go, if there's no use for it. The body's like, well, I got nothing to do with this. Like I'm just going right. to store it away as fat, right? It'll mm-hmm. store it around the liver first and in the muscle. And then if those, you know, the, the, there's no room at the end in those places, the body's got to store it somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. So the more you can move and use what's coming in, the better off your glucose will be. Mm-hmm. Do you have any thoughts around keto and low carb uh, during any phase of menopause? Yeah, I think I think that can be really helpful. I mean, there's there are some interesting studies out there about keto for brain fog. Um, and anecdotal, I would say it's more anecdotal as opposed to like clinical evidence, uh, where women find that when they're in a state of ketosis, the brain fog can be alleviated because their brain is running on ketones Mm -hmm. as opposed to the glucose. Like I mentioned, again, anecdotal evidence can Mm -hmm. be really interesting if someone's, and, and I think what, what we really try and advocate is that metabolic flexibility, it's the, it's the, it's your body can, you know, sort of flex in and out of using different types of fuels. And so that can be particularly helpful for women. Um, if they are really struggling with these kinds of things is to maybe, you know, go into a lower carbohydrate state and then, and then flex into a higher carbohydrate state. Nothing has to be forever. Nothing has to be, you know, the, the only way that you eat the rest of your life. We really do try and liberalize women's diets too. Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. a lot of times women come to us, maybe come to you as well. And they're like, I eat three things and nothing's working, Mm -hmm. you know, and Mm -hmm. you have to be like, okay, let's Mm -hmm. unpack this. Like you have to enjoy your life. There are things that you can eat and and are are Mm -hmm. good for you, nutrient dense foods. Mm -hmm. And let's find a way to make those work the best for you. Mm -hmm. And I'll just add my two cents uh, just because I have coached many women through both, you know, uh, balanced macro uh, diets uh, while they're going through menopause or post-menopause. And also keto and just throwing this out there. My experience has been if you are perimenopausal um, and you are going to try keto and you are also going to try to be on a calorie deficit and exercise a bunch all at the same time, I've only seen that not go well. I've seen the you know, hot flashes get worse or the the uh, mood go worse. It's too much stress at once. So yeah. if yeah. especially if you're not like that overweight, you know, it's those women, like they're like 20 something percent body fat and they just want to get super fit and they want to do keto and exercise a bunch. And they're, it, I've seen one just, I've seen one, I, one uh, she just stopped having her period. I'm like, okay, that's it. Nope, 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 nope. I'm like, you have to stop adding running, you know, cause it's like the type of her sound. They're like, I added a five mile run every day to what you gave me. And like, you know, really restricting calories and carbs, like not bueno. So just, I just had to like throw that out there. Like if you're going to try keto and you're going to that phase, I wouldn't recommend doing it for the purpose of having some big calorie deficit and exercising because keto in and of itself, that adaptation is a stressor on your body. So just eat, 
eat food, like just be satiated, like, you know, walk a lot. Like you can train, but it depends on the person. Are you super inflamed and stressed out of your mind? Maybe you just need to walk a lot. Maybe you need to have some warm baths and, and uh, a massage and, you know, <laughs> some yeah. abundance energy. Right. And so. So true. You have to care for yourself and women going mm -hmm. through this. Well, first of all, a lot of times they probably come to you and they come to us and they're kind of on their last, their last lit. You're, they're like, Oh my God, like what is, they're so frustrated. Mm -hmm. They're really banging their head. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I get it. I get it. It's incredibly frustrating. Like you said, what has worked before is no longer working. Right. Um, and some of that is just natural aging, right? It's just the body's natural aging process. And some of it you sort of have to accept and some of it, you know, you can do, you know, I think yeah. we obviously both would agree on the, on the, um, benefits of strength training. It's really mm -hmm. so important for women in particular. Um, mm -hmm. just like I said, you want more storage space for glucose, the more, the more muscle mass you have, the more lean muscle mass you have, the more storage space you have for glucose, right? The more the, the, the body's ability to store store that away for great for, for mm -hmm. use at a later time. It's so good. It's so mm -hmm. needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A building muscle for me has made it uh, taken me from someone who always struggled with weight her whole life to like, and I don't say this to be annoying. I say this to like inspire, but like, it's like effortless. I just have so much muscle mass. Like I can store a lot of carbs and I'm active daily. Right. So I'm using it right to your movement suggestion. Right. But if you can build those babies up, you got big old carb storage tanks. That's what I call them. <laughs> carb sponges or carb storage tanks. Right. That's so, yeah. exactly right. Right. And the more, mm -hmm. and like, and then again, then you're liberalizing someone's diet. Then they're not mm -hmm. feeling like, Oh my God, like if I eat this, mm -hmm. my glucose is going to spike and, and mm -hmm. then it'll get all good sort of fat. And it's like, no, absolutely not. Like mm -hmm. you've got this machine of your body and you've got to fuel it the right way. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I totally agree. And, and that kind of brings me to the type of carbohydrates to have, right. I mean, mm, nice. we really want to talk about the high fiber carbohydrates, yeah. the complex carbohydrates, because that fiber also helps regulate your estrogen levels in your body. Mm -hmm. So you might have someone that's coming into perimenopause with really wild, like high, high, high levels of estrogen that then come plummet, you know, that estrogen dominance that can happen mm -hmm. sometimes right? Mm -hmm. You got to make sure that you're shedding it. And mm -hmm. the one, a really great way to shed it is through bowel movements and you need the fiber for it. So a lot yep. of times, like all of that stuff interplays together and you really need the fiber to help, uh, to help you out. So a lot of times I talk to women, I'm like, let's get some complex carbohydrates in there. You need more fiber. You can't just like, it's not all chia seeds, right? right. <laughs> Even though I love chia seeds, like, you know, right. you, you have to have more. I can't agree more. And then on top of it, you know, separate conversation, but just the impacts on the gut microbiome when you're eating mostly pure-ish foods from nature, you know, like granted some room for some healthy chips or, you know, some things here and there or whatever, some treats or, you know, but like, but overall you're giving yourself an abundance of non-inflammatory variety from nature. The impacts in your gut microbiome are also going to help with hormone regulation, satiety regulation, uh, um, uh, blood sugar management, you know, uh, a friend of mine's a gut specialist and she sees it all the time. She's like, it's insane what happens to people's blood sugar from optimizing their gut, you know, and the whole system. Right. right. So big, right. big fan of, you know, fiber. And if you're in that place where like, maybe you've had some gut issues and you can't handle fibers, you know, that's obviously I'm speaking generally right now, but you can get to a place you can get to that place. And that's, that is the goal for us to be able to eat a wide variety of foods from nature and be able to digest them all well. And it is achievable and attainable. So absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think what's really great about the CGM, again, sometimes people come to us and like, well, what's, what's the perfect, like, what's, what's it supposed to look like? Like, like, and I always say there's no perfect, you know, glucose, um, you know, chart in a day, there's just your better glucose chart in a day nice, because nice. we all respond differently to different carbohydrates. Um, and we're all in different cycles and we all have different body mass, right? So women are always trying to compare themselves to like someone they saw on, you know, an influencer, someone they saw on TikTok, someone they saw on Instagram, like, well, that person has this smoothie every morning and they look amazing. And it's like, right. wow that person's so different from you. <laughs> yep. you know, like you, you can't make those health decisions based on what you're seeing, you know, someone showing you, you need to have that data to see how you are responding to what's mm -hmm. going on. Like maybe that person has that smoothie and then goes for a workout. You have that smoothie and sit in your car in traffic for 
you know, 45 minutes. Like that's a very different response to the same food. Right. Or maybe they have a bunch of muscle mass and they just weight lifted and then had that smoothie and their muscles are just like, gimme, gimme, gimme. And it's just going straight into replenishing muscle glycogen versus if you don't train, you know, you don't have very much muscle mass. You just woke up and had that and sat on your couch, you know, like you're going to have anyone would have a different response to that. Yeah. Right. And maybe yeah. you got sleep deprived the night before, or maybe the fitness chick got sleep deprived before and she still trained and she, she maybe she didn't have as good a blood sugar response to that. And she could be like, huh, that's weird. Why did my blood sugar go higher today? Oh, right. cause I didn't sleep well last night. Right. So yeah. Anyway, it's all so interconnected and it's all mm-hmm. so individual. So that's mm-hmm. what we try and, and emphasize with, with our members is this is about you and your journey and your journey is, is no one else's right for better, or for worse. You know, there's a lot of people here to support you in it. Um, but you can't compare yourself to anyone else. All you can do is compare yourself to who you were before and to make, you know, to make better, to make better choices, to work towards a better version of yourself and a healthier version of yourself. And, you know, I think it's, it's hard and, and you can stumble along the way. Uh, but if you have these tools and you have the data, uh, it can really be motivating. I'm curious about your comment of like, there's no perfect blood sugar, just your, you know, looking at yours. Like, so do you, I mean, do you have ranges of what, you know, could you discuss that? Like at least some sort of ballpark of like (laughs) what we kind of want to shoot for and what would be concerning. Absolutely. So our app is awesome. And we basically take, you know, when, when your glucose data gets uh, you know, transmitted into the app, we slice and dice it a thousand different ways. So highest level, we have a range. 70 is the lower and 140 is the upper. And we like to see glucose stay within range 100% of the day. Now, some people get real, real strict and they're like, no, I don't want to go above, you know, 120 or whatever. That's your choice. But um, based on on our research and everything, the optimal range is between 70 uh, and 140. We also measure um, average glucose, uh, so over the course of 24 hours, we want to see your glucose less than 105. Um, we also measure variability, which is really my favorite um, uh, metric to look at. Variability is basically the swings in your glucose. And that's really a proxy for that insulin sensitivity insensitivity. Uh, because the higher your glucose swings, the longer it takes to come back down. That's when that's like a red flag dust. That's mm-hmm. like, hmm something's not right. The body isn't able to handle this carbohydrate load. Like, let's see what's going on here. So what we like to see are more gentle ocean waves, right? And so it's completely normal for your glucose to go up. It's normal to have carbohydrates. It's you know normal to have these fluctuations, but we don't want them to be huge, wild swings. We just want that, those gentle ocean waves. Okay. Curious on this, like, you know, let's say I hit a really hard training sesh and my blood sugar is elevated and like pretty good, you know, it's out of range. It's like, you know, it's gone over 140 because I'm beast moding it. Um, and let's say maybe, you know, I had plenty of carbs during the day and then I, you know, hit a intense bike ride later. It wouldn't be intense, but let's just say somehow it like from exercise, I had elevate. I went on a hike or something later, you know, um, if that makes your average higher than one Oh five, I think, is that what you said? One Oh five is what, you know, like, do you just kind of like use your own mind to think, okay, well that wasn't from food. Like I understand why it was like that. Like, you know what I mean? Yes, exactly. And, (laughs) um, you know, we, we look at like the higher, the, like those hit workouts, those really intense strength training workouts. Mm -hmm. Um, we do tend to see glucose will go up. It should come right back down. Mm -hmm. And we're not really concerned about those, um, Mm -hmm. like exercise induced spikes. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that makes sense. That's basically, uh, for your audience, that's really when the body just doesn't have enough readily available Mm -hmm. fuel, you know, say you work mm-hmm. out first in the morning, fasted, and you really right. you went to a boot camp, like something really intense. Right. Your body just doesn't have enough fuel floating around in your bloodstream from last night. Mm-hmm. So it pulls it out of storage. And that's why, it, you know, that's why it sends it up on your chart. Uh, mm-hmm. You're not, you know, there's nothing wrong with you or nothing right. like that. That's just the body trying to fuel your workout. Yeah. Thanks. But I just bring that up. What's Sorry, that? Go ahead. Oh, no, no, go. I just, I just bring that up because sometimes, you know, people can get very like numbers, like pigeonholed, like can't go up. And like, I'm like, 
to me, I'm looking at that as I'm utilizing my glycogen. I'm utilizing stored glycogen, which is like that whole point I just said about carb sponges and, you know, using it up and then it refills. So, you know, just because it goes red, right? And our little like right. third grader sticker chart thing is like, oh no, I did bad. I, I got red, you know? So I just wanted to kind of highlight that. <laughs> no, for sure. And and people get, people are like, I had no idea this was happening, but it can also help with fueling around your exercise. Like it, it can really help open that conversation of, okay, right. well, totally. do we want to try a small snack? But like, do you want to work out fasted? Which again, right. we can work out fasted, totally fine. Let's make sure we're replenishing everything that we uh, used mm -hmm. up during our workout afterwards. Like it really can help people mm -hmm. optimize their workouts when they see that mm -hmm. uh, see kind of like what kind of small tweaks can they make? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like an experiment of like, let me just have like a protein shake with, you know, banana, frozen banana and the protein shake for like a week, see how my blood sugar looks on here. And also how do I feel? What was my performance like? Like that's the kind of biohacking that you can do with data to back it up, you know? And it's just like the aura ring. Like I had one of these forever and then I didn't wear one for like a while. Cause I, I had started to notice like when I got that data, like, okay, this is what a deep sleep rich night feels like. And this is what a, you know, half of my normal deep sleep feels like. Got it. Like, it feels like that. Like, you know what I mean? And I think blood, the CGMs can be very similar Right. I don't always notice. I don't always notice, but you do. I do start to notice little things like, okay, that's what a day feels like. If I'm chronically riding high, I was pretty busy. I was pretty fast paced. Like that's what that kind of day feels like. Oh, okay. If I l allow myself to come into calm, like more throughout the middle of the day, that's what that day. Like. And you start to feel it and you can take that with you, you know? So it's cool. A hundred percent. I I think that translates so well to, to women that are having difficulty sleeping. And mm -hmm. it's that, it's that idea of testing out what are you doing at night and then mm -hmm. seeing how you slept. Yep. Um, you know, the night, the, like the night after that, and then looking at your glucose reading. So you, you can also look exactly. at your HRV, but I think it's super interesting just to look at your glucose if oh, you're not sure. sleeping well, um, to be like, okay, so what did I eat? When did I eat? You know, did I have alcohol? Did I move around at all afterwards? Was I eating, you know, I came in the door at seven 30, just grabbed something, sat and watched Netflix and rolled to bed. Like, uh -huh. oh, you know, your glucose is going to be all over the place. Right. But yeah. when we start to optimize those nighttime routines, uh, people, women are sleeping better and it is, it's like, it's like mm -hmm. the world is opening up to them again. Totally. A hundred percent. You get your circadian rhythm and your sleep on point. It's like, Oh, life isn't hard. What was I? Right. Oh, <laughs> um, and I like personally, like correlating the CGM to mm -hmm. an HRV tracker, because then like, you know, for example, for me, sometimes my blood sugar can be kind of low at night because maybe I, I do intermittent fast and maybe I didn't um, eat as late or have as many carbs in that meal. And and it's interesting because I'm like, well, I still slept like a freaking baby. I got like two hours of deep sleep and plenty of REM. I feel amazing. And it's just kind of an, and then sometimes it's not low like that, but it's kind of an interesting note to self for me is like, I don't know that I really see that as problematic for me because I can see that I slept great with my blood sugar at that level. So noted, you know, exactly. Exactly. You, like you have to learn. And, and again, or maybe you're at a different point in your cycle. Right. right and your body right. was just like, your body was cool with that lower amount of carbohydrate. It was like, that's great. Like we couldn't handle any more right now. Like mm -hmm. you did a great job. And then at other points in your cycle, when, you know, things are a little bit different in your, in your hormones, totally. you know, it, it might not be, you know, it might not feel as great, or maybe you're having like some PMS symptoms and you're like, I just can't resist the treat tonight. Like I, I have to open mm -hmm. the bag of like sweetened mm -hmm. rice cakes or whatever it is. Right. And then you see what happens. Um, mm -hmm. and it can right. really help women change those behaviors uh, totally. because they have the data for it. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, I wanted to hit a little bit on post menopause, any insights for women there in terms of their blood sugar and what they can do to help make sure that they're having healthy blood sugar after menopause. 
Yeah, I mean, so that that's where basically a very like flat line, uh, flat line estrogen um, and progesterone levels. So you know, again, or, or you know, sort of depending if someone is um, supplementing, but if not, um, they just have you know flat line. And so generally, what what women need to worry about at that point is their glucose levels, and again, that heart heart disease, that inflammation risk factor. So that's where we can kind of take this glucose data and say, okay, how does this apply? to my body systemically. Um, and if you are having wild swings in your glucose, like what's going on, you know, we, there's metabolic syndrome, which is those five, you know, those five factors, your cholesterol, um, your two different levels of cholesterol, your waist circumference, your fasting glucose, your blood pressure, right? I mean, even if you have low levels of estrogen, you might still have a lot of these risk factors for metabolic syndrome. Um, and so it's really important to still be looking at your fasting glucose, your blood pressure, Sure, your cholesterol levels to make sure that you are in, so that you are you know, in your best health as you're going um, into these later stages. And so I think it's super important to make sure that you aren't having these wild swings, that you do have enough muscle mass to handle the amount of um, carbohydrate that you're taking into your body. Mm -hmm. And I think as I said too, I think fiber is so important. Like I had a client who was a 30 year vegan, you know, post menopause in her mid sixties and her, she had excellent blood sugar regulation, mm -hmm. like, you know, 80, you know, 84 or something fasted glucose, HbA1c was like 4.9 or five or something. And it, you know, Amazing. we hear from like the kind of carnivore keto, low carb community, like they're all going to become insulin resistant because they eat too many carbs. And I'm like, and she's, she's not a super, super active person either. And I just was like sitting here thinking, Okay, she may have some genetics on her side, but also she eats a very like healthful vegan diet, lots of fiber, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm sure plenty of complete proteins between rice and beans and whatnot, you know. And so I don't know, I just, it, it kind of hit me. I was like, you know, fiber, it, I, I've known people who have gotten past type two diabetes from vegetarian diets, you know, mm -hmm. and I, all I can think, I'm like, it's gotta be that fiber. It's gotta be all, all the, all the, you know, healthful plant polyphenols, vitamins, minerals, all exactly. that and fiber. <laughs> it's the antioxidants and the fiber. I'm not kidding you. Right. You know, also a lot of times with vegans, which um, is interesting to touch on too, is they, they will eat higher generally they will, yeah, I don't know if this particular woman was, but they will eat higher levels of like soy uh, foods. Um, you know, they will eat tofu, right. tempeh, um, edamame, uh, soybeans, things like that. And, you know, those phytoestrogens, it's, it's sort of hard to quantify, but yeah. what's really interesting, it's not really like you can take like a phytoestrogen pill and that's going to be the same thing as estrogen, right? It doesn't work that way, but those correlation studies between different, um, you know, uh, 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 ethnicities all over the world, right? Like, like, um, you know, cultures that eat higher, um, soy foods generally have lower incidence of like some of these Western diseases, um, you know, like diabetes and heart disease and stuff like that. And so there's, there's sort of an interesting exploration of the protective nature of some of these phytoestrogens. So if your vegan was eating tofu over the course of 30 years, you know, mm -hmm. who knows kind of how that contributed to her. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I think, um, there became this huge fear of soy, like crazy for a while there, but I think that was largely led by like a male, male voices, you know, it's going to give you man boobs and all these things. And, you know, yeah, there may be some considerations there, but I like that we're opening up to this more for women, you know, and, and, oh, and yes, the, mm -hmm. the studies that they cited were all done in like animals and you could mm -hmm. never you could never ingest the amount of soy that they ingested. Like it was just such bonkers research. And you're like, wow. this is a headline. This is not real life. Um, wow. But it did. It caused a lot of fear among a lot of people. And there's actually so much uh, research out there showing the protective nature against cancer, um, against that kind nice. of stuff for women with soy food. So um, I say give it a whirl. There's it's it's really great for you. And it's a natural source of calcium, which women need anyways, because women mm. do not take in enough calcium. Um, mm. So I'm always very pro. I'm like, don't do oat milk drink soy milk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I shared recently, probably a lot of listeners saw the post I made about oat milk that you guys enlightened me about. Cause I, I, I hadn't become familiar. I knew oat milk wasn't the most optimal thing in the world, but I was like, but man, it's so yummy and a latte. It is. So <laughs> I'm just going to have, I'm just going to have it anyway. <laughs> and, uh, man, when I saw what it did to my blood sugar, I seriously, I messaged, you know, one of your nutritionists, I was like, Hey dude, like, 
do you think this is a mistake <laughs> All I had was like a, you know, oat milk, oat milk latte. And he's like, sent me an article you guys had. I was like, what? I didn't know it turned into maltose <laughs> when they use the enzyme to process it. Oh my gosh. And I tried it one more time. I couldn't bring myself to do it any more than that, but I did one more time. Same thing happened. I was like, whoa, okay. Okay. Um, and that kind of leads me to what's next. Cause you guys have amazing resources, um, that I, that I when people ask about the NutriSense CGM, like I'm trying to help them understand, like you're not just paying for the monitor, you're paying for basically full on blood sugar coaching and like a huge resource library, like inside the app, you guys have all sorts of training yeah. and education. So can you, can you talk about a little bit about like what NutriSense actually is and Absolutely. besides just the yeah. CGM? Yeah. Yeah. So I like to explain it. We, we offer, we offer hardware, software, and the human touch, right? So when you sign up for NutriSense, you get a sensor, which is a hardware. We don't make it. It's, you can either get the um, Abbott Freestyle Libre, or you can get a Dexcom. Um, that's, you know, that's your choice upon checkout and you get our app. So you get the hardware and then you get the software. Our app is amazing. I think our app is really, really incredible. Um, so, you know, some people are like, well, I just, I track my, I, you know, I got a Libre from my doctor and I just look at the Libre app. I'm like, that is just a squiggly line. It tells you nothing. <laughs> so mm -hmm. our app, you can log your meals, you can log stress. It syncs with your phone to log, you know, to pull in workouts. We have a journal thing. So you can log your stress, log your hunger, um, log how, your mood and how you're feeling. So you can overlay all that data onto your glucose to really figure out those patterns. Um, we also in the app have a learn tab, like you said, mm -hmm. it's got tons of articles. It's got like exactly, um, we've got like little programs like, you know, lighten up, um, like a little weight loss program, that kind of stuff, uh, which is really helpful for people to understand, uh, you know, kind of like what they're looking at and why it applies to them. But you're mm -hmm. absolutely right. Our website has this amazing resource um, of blog articles. We call it the journal. And like I picked, I picked, I just pulled it up here. Women's health. We have an article, eight best vitamins and supplements for menopause, according to a nutritionist, um, weightlifting for women, the best, you know, the best guide, uh, best probiotics for women, cycle syncing, stress in your period. I mean, we have so mm -hmm. many important topics, the role of mm -hmm. magnesium and menopause, the menopause diet, what foods mm -hmm. to eat, right? So yeah. there's so many things in here that you can be like, oh, that's why this data matters to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, or if you're coming to it with any, when, with anything else, we have so many different articles on there. Yeah, no, and it's really good information. I appreciate how balanced you guys are too. You know what I mean? It's like, you know what? Sometimes you read a blog post and it's just like, it's a little too subjective or it doesn't really tell you much. Like you guys are the, those ones that like, it's very like even, you know, zooming out, looking at things with lots of like cool new information you didn't know with links to studies. It's one of those type of things. So I really appreciate that about you guys. Oh, and thank you. Yeah. And the, the learn tab, like, you know, just sharing specifically, like making sense of glucose is an eight week guided journey, you know, in range, a beginner's 12 module journey to understand your glucose levels. They're to the point, you know, getting that. And then also like the nutritionist access has that, that's changed recently how you guys are offering that, right? Yeah, that's super exciting for us. So we used to offer, if anyone has heard of us before or used us before in your audience, we used to offer nutrition support via um, chat in like mm. in your app, you would get like, you know, text messages and you would chat back and forth with your nutritionist. We are now doing video calls, which is fascinating. It's so much better member experience and mm. better experience for the nutritionist. Because as you know, when you're talking and you're coaching people, if you can't see them or- right like explain something, especially with all this data, I can share my screen. We can go over and we can be like, Tara, let's go over yesterday. And you'll be like, yeah, what was happening? And we can look at the data together. Right. I can show you things that you might not have realized. Like it is so powerful to have this. So what mm -hmm. we're doing is we're offering that through insurance, right? So, so just to be totally clear, the CGM subscription is still out of pocket. We do accept FSA, HSA. Um, but that's, that's a separate payment. And then, um, like 90% of our members are covered by, by their insurance for these nutrition um, calls. So it's fascinating. People love it. They're like, oh, this makes so much sense. I'm so glad I got to talk to someone. Um, and even if your insurance doesn't cover it, we do offer a free complimentary call with one of our nutritionists just to help okay. you understand 
data anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And there's so much information inside the app already. Like you can probably pretty much figure it out yourself if you, for some reason, can't do that through it. Right. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, and then I'm just throwing out there for you guys, Nutrisense said, give me a $50 off your first month code. It is Coach Tara. So if you guys want to take advantage of that, we'll link it up in the show notes. And, you know, they, I like, you guys have made a lot of updates. I appreciate you've got all your pricing just like right there. So you guys can check it out and see what you think would work for you. But yeah, I really appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, it's, I'm sure it hasn't been like the easiest business journey to get off the ground, but like, it's so hard to find a CGM if you don't already have type two diabetes, you know, it's like this whole trick. And then you don't know how to understand it or what to do with information. And like, I, I just really appreciate you guys like pushing through these years to like really make sure that people have access to this kind of stuff. Because I think I, I consider the CGM and uh, HRV tracker, the coolest tools hands down that we have to understand our own biology. So appreciate you guys so much. Oh, thanks for, well, and we appreciate you, um, you know, as a professional in the health you know, realm to be talking about why this is important, right? We talk about why it's important. We think it's important, yes. but it's so wonderful to have other advocates out there saying, Hey, this is to help you prevent, you know, X, Y, Z. This is to help you like, you know, have a longer, happier, healthier life, um, mm -hmm. you know, prevent, you know, prevent 20 years from down the road now. And, and that's, right. that's a hard thing to sell to people, right? Um, you know, if you have a donut today, you're not going to have a heart attack tomorrow. Right. You're not going to get diabetes tomorrow, but it's really helpful for people to take charge. And I think women are finally doing that, um, particularly as they're going into this next phase of their life. And they don't want to necessarily have their mother's menopause or their grandmother's menopause. They, they want to have a better, happier, healthier, um, you know, sort of second act. And, and I think it's fantastic. And this is a yeah. great tool to help them do it. Yeah, agreed. All right, well, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you, Tara. Mm -hmm.